So now, which one of these was <laughs> the house? Well, I think they're standing pretty close there now. Close to a Brooklyn Heights row house where a landmark children's so. book was born 50 years Whoa. ago. No! <laughs> yes, this is it. That's it. This is it. It was here that two young housemates dreamed up the celebrated children's adventure, The Phantom Tollbooth, written by Norton Juster with illustrations by Jules Pfeiffer. The story centers on a bored boy named Milo who didn't know what to do with himself. Not just sometimes, but always. When he was in school, he longed to be out, and when he was out, he longed to be in. On the way, he thought about coming home, and coming home, he thought about going. A boy, in fact, a lot like Norton Juster. He was more like me than I was, actually. <laughs> a bald kid with a beard, yeah. <laughs> Just. Today, Jules Pfeiffer is a Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist, playwright, and screenwriter. Norton Juster is a successful architect, as well as children's book author. But back to the story of Milo, the indifferent boy who is transformed when he discovers a magic toll booth that's a gateway to all kinds of adventures, to kings and princesses and fantastic places like the foothills of confusion and the mountains of ignorance, all visited with his trusty companion, Tok, the ultimate watchdog. And Norton would read me what he had written. And in order to avoid doing the work I was supposed to be doing, I began sketching characters for the Phantom Tollbooth. And as it evolved, it just seemed like a natural act that this book was going to be illustrated. Why not by me? Particularly when the words just begged to be illustrated. You have uh, a police officer. He's short called shrift. Short Shrift. Right, right exactly. <laughs> what else would you call him? And he police? gives everything Short Shrift. <laughs> Pfeiffer faithfully drew the cop and other characters like the humbug and the math magician and a spelling bee who urges Milo not to be A-L-A-R-M-E-D. But as they explained at the Brooklyn Book Festival, Pfeiffer drew the line at putting the armies of wisdom on horseback. Jules didn't like to draw horses. I didn't know how to draw horses. Yeah, right. And so he asked me if it would be all right if he mounted the army on cats. <laughs> and we had, we had real to do about that till finally he very grudgingly drew an outline of one horse from the side and we just set it back several times. <laughs> the book was made into an animated film with the courtiers of Dictionopolis, the land of words, welcoming Milo. Greetings. Salutations. Welcome. Good afternoon. Hi. Juster, now 82, and Pfeiffer, 83, say back in 1961, no one expected the phantom toll booth to materialize into anything. The vocabulary is too difficult. The ideas were too complex. Uh, kids would not get any of the wordplay and punning. And to top it all off... It's not really a children's book. Yeah, not a children's book, of course. Fantasy is bad for children because it disorients them. But sitting in one of their old Brooklyn haunts, the Queen Italian Restaurant, they recall that the reviews were raves, starting with The New Yorker, which dubbed the book a newborn classic. And my first thought was, my goodness, if I had written that review myself, I couldn't have made it any better. You know, I was absolutely staggered by it. Today, Juster gets a rock star's reception at places like the Field School in Washington, D.C., where every single student read the book. He seems bored, which a lot of kids do. Like, they never know what they want to do. What we're talking about in, in the book are concerns and things that I think almost every child goes through. Fears, uncertainties, apprehensions, misunderstandings. A 50th anniversary edition was recently published with appreciations by other writers. What happened to your glasses? You're not wearing your glasses. Oh, they're over here. And generations of readers line up to Thank get you. their sometimes tattered books signed. Look at that. It's from 1971. I just want to thank you so much. I read the book when I was eight and when I was 13 and when I was 17 and now I'm 20. My pleasure. This is why you do these things. You want to make a connection between yourself and some anonymous readers out there who you will be important to and who are important to you in consequence. And in the very room in which he sat, there were books that could take you anywhere 
and things to invent and make and build and break and all the puzzle and excitement of everything he didn't know. So what you're proudest of, of this book, is really the fact that people can read into it what they want yes, to. Yes, and, and with my delight and my blessing. <laughs>